Welcome to America's Heroes Group. And with that, welcome to America's Heroes Group, our roundtable with our focus on community outreach that we call the Metropolitan Chicago Veterans Matter Show. Today is Saturday, April 15, 2023. April is Sexual Assault, Minority Health, and Autism Awareness Month. Our host is Cliff Kelly. I'm Sean Clayman, the co-host. Our executive producer is Glenda Smith, and our digital media producer is Ivor Nartega of Scouts Honor Productions. And we have a familiar voice in the line with us today. This week, we have Rochelle Crump and another. She's a U.S. Army veteran, and founder and president of National Women's Veterans United. How you doing, Rochelle? Doing just fine, Sean. Thank you so much for having me again today. We appreciate the opportunity to talk about those issues that some don't want to hear about or they don't want to talk about. So tell us about the discussion we're going to have is about Metropolitan Chicagoland veterans. What's going on with the Chicagoland community and the veteran side of things? Absolutely. I would say the biggest thing and the first thing that we want to say is that veterans matter. It's just evident. We matter. So we need to come together like we used to do years ago, and we used to have a platform of things that we wanted to discuss, not only with just legislators, but with the community at large, to bring the veterans together to make the voice louder and stronger, to be able to get the things that we need, and it's a demand. We actually ask all the time to do things, and we get no response. We get no quick action to it. But as a collective group, because we are all stronger together, then we make a demand so that those things can come to fruition and that the things that we need actually are made available to all veterans because we are in this together. And so many are still hurting. So many things are still going unnoticed. Uh, You know, we won't go right into talking about the homelessness, but then we have other groups that come to the city and their house right away and, you know, things like that. We want to make sure that that voice is still out there, is strong, and it's heard. Veterans matter. They matter. So we're going to start out with pretty much the mayor-elect, Brandon Johnson, where we want to come together. We want him to hear us. We want him to talk to us and listen to us and understand veterans matter. So with that, there's so many things that we need to do. Let's start with having the Veterans Affairs Director. There was one before. I'm a former director of that city uh, post, and they have reinstituted it. So we want to make sure that they fill it with someone who is qualified. You know, we don't want it to be somebody that you made a promise to, someone whose son or daughter pretty much you're, you know, trying to oblige, oblige, oblige them because they voted for you or they helped you in your campaign and things like that. And even though well, they're Rochelle, veterans, why do you why do you why do you start with that part of it? So if a person so if they want we, to put somebody in that position, has are you saying that because people have to understand people are not from Chicago. Everybody that listens to the show from across the world and around the country. Why would why yeah. do you bring that point up? So there has we to be somebody that, that has to be because, qualified. Because this is where we are in any position that has to do with anything important and that matters should have someone who's qualified. But why wouldn't they put somebody who's qualified? Well, because sometimes what happens, we all know that, you know, sometimes people come to or go to jobs that they weren't qualified for, but they had a shoe in because they knew someone. Let's face it, that that still happens. Even though there are laws to prevent it, it still happens. True, but how many times have you gone? I don't know if you go to the VA or not. It's supposed to be better in profit. So, do you think well, that how? that is an issue in the VA community or the VA system, or do you think that's an issue with City of Chicago that they have a track it's record of still, doing this? It still exists in the city, the state, the federal, county. It still exists. So, it still goes on. Let me ask you this: So, what? Assuming that that Brandon Johnson is listening to this show, and he's this people mm-hmm. definitely will see this show or hear this show. What would you yes. say to him as far as, uh, f- say, five things that you would like to see happen in the veteran community that the city can get involved with to make happen? That would be the first appointment that he does for the director of Veterans Affairs. And that person will be connected directly to the community. And when they meet with the community and go over all the demands that there are, one is to make sure that that person who he gets, again, needs to be qualified. 
qualification doesn't go with your rank in military. Let's just face it. It has nothing at all to do with it. What do you know about the city of Chicago, the issues that are going on in Chicago? And I'll go back to homelessness because that's a really big one. And about the mental health issues that are not basically getting around to the veterans who need it the most. You know, because they haven't figured out a way to do it, you know, and there's too much money floating around, money, money everywhere in the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois, and in Cook County. Money all over everywhere for us not to be able to solve, to solve some of those things that affect everyone, everyone. Homelessness affects everyone. Mental health, everyone. So we want him to know that veterans want a voice. We want to talk to him. We want to know what his platform is. If he doesn't have one, we want to help him to develop one. So by developing that, we start with the person being qualified to come into that position because they understand what's going on in the community. They've been in the community. They have connections in the community. It doesn't have to be someone who's been there before. It doesn't have to be someone who basically, you know, they like, you know, let's get some fresh blood. True enough, we want younger people, obviously, because there's more issues now with younger veterans that are coming out of the military than there are for those of us who basically have been around a long time. Now, I'm seasoned myself, but I continue to fight for the rights of veterans, primarily for women, but also all veterans. So this is about all veterans. But we want to make sure that women do not get left out the process. Hmm. One of the things he mentioned Homeless, in this campaign. Mental health, mm-hmm. employment for those. You know, there's a lot of things to connect, for example, the state, the county, the city, and the uh, federal. You know, why those collaborations are not, you know, filtered out where they can do a lot more stuff. We realize that those funds have to stay separate. That doesn't mean they have to do the same thing. This state can do this. The city can do this. The federal can do that. The county can do that. And put that together, not the funds, but the process of it all or what's needed in order to solve the problems that we have. So for people the that same don't, way that they do. But, let me ask hmm? this, but this is the thing for people that don't aren't familiar with veteran problems and issues, particularly in Chicago. What are those Mm -hmm. specific things? So we mentioned homelessness. You mentioned having a director, which is important, so they can reach out to those things. What would you like to see the director do besides? When we start talking about veterans in business, let's look at that also. Let's let's look at which doesn't have anything to do uh, directly with the city, but let's look at the, the, the organizations that are being supported out here. How are not for profit organizations being supported? They do the most of the work out here, but it is seasonal that we find out about grants at the bail the day before it expires, or you got to have it in on the first. And today is is like <laughs> you missed it because boom, it's over with. Like you I know said, because they're not getting the information out. And like I, I can't tell you how week. many grants. That's the thing. That's like I said last week. It would be nice if, like some organizations do. They have a bulletin board where you know on a certain particular date of the year, for example, everybody knows April 15th is tax is tax time. So April 15th, yeah. you got to get your taxes in. So if you know, okay, around every quarter or every year, once a year or every six months or a certain date of the mm-hmm. year, there is going to be some grants issued out for veterans or for people of not-for-profits, mm-hmm. things like that. People could have a time and a place to go to to look at and find out that information. But things, but like you said, everything comes out kind of this at random. And oftentimes, particularly with, say, Chicago benefits and Chicago grants and things like that, Mm -hmm. you can't speak for every city around the country, but particularly with Chicago, a lot of things happen at the last minute. And things are, if you're not on the, if you're not in the know, you don't know because they don't always publicize and let the information out there. And and unless you're just one of those guys that go out there and just search the website every day and kind of hunt for all the Mm -hmm. different opportunities that are out there. You don't know about all the grants and all the things that happen in the city. There are tons and tons of grants. Now, to to the point, though, Chicago is not has not been the most financially stable city. I mean, we're not like we're like Detroit going to be in bankruptcy, but our bond rating of everything has kind of been taking a hit. We've started to turn the corner. 
I mean, mm-hmm. people, don't, people don't mm-hmm. give J.B. Pritzker a lot of credit for this, but we have turned a corner since he's been in office of getting our, our bond rating to, for the state of Illinois that bet back in shape and also trying to yes. improve the way that we spend our money and handle our money. However, there, we still got to get a handle of corruption. That's a big problem. We got to get a handle mm-hmm. on that. But we got to also uh, shape our budget up because Chicago has a ton of taxes that people don't talk about oftentimes. Enough. Yes. We pay taxes on everything. And on top, of our gas has extra. Double we, taxes. We have a, ta- a tax taxes. just for being in Chicago. <laughs> we have to pay a special tax on your on gas just to get fill, put yes. gas in your car. You know, and these are types yes. of things, you know, but, but to, also to your point as well, um, both candidates talked briefly about this, but Brandon Johnson did mention a lot in his campaign about having uh, specially trained people to handle mental health issues. So instead of mm-hmm, using the police mm-hmm. department to go out and handle all of these problems that we have in the street, a la LaCroix McDonald or, or and things that happen where somebody's getting shot 16 times for, for because of something that could have been solved with maybe a conversation or something yeah. else, you have if you have the right people in, in the right places – people with the right qualifications to handle the right problems, we can have better outcomes and maybe even save some money in the process. Absolutely. They may be able to solve it eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> At least get close to it. Mm-hmm. You know, where more is being done, more significant things are being done in order to get it accomplished. And uh, that's what we see a lot of times, you know, uh, it can be going on for a short time and then next thing you know, it's gone away. Yeah. And it's like, where did that go? They don't do that anymore. Now you were working you know, in the VA system right when too. it was going good. Yeah, with your experience in the VA system, what do you, th- you? How do you see the VA's role in trying to improve what's going on in Chicago with veterans? Well, the VA is getting. I'll just speak for Jesse Brown because I know more about Jesse Brown. And even though that's not the hospital that I use for my health care, I can say that they are becoming a lot more. Um, available to the community veterans and this is what veterans wanted they're finally figuring out that everything doesn't have to be in the hospital those things need to filter into the community where the veterans are so when they say meet the veteran where they are that's really what that means meet the veterans where they are and that's where they you know pretty much are in their own territory where they feel comfortable being at different organizations or whatever, and that the VA comes to them and be a part of the community of what's going on, not you going to the hospital because the hospital really is for sick people, Mm -hmm. you know, and those programs that are helping veterans to deal with their trauma and things like that, that doesn't have to be in the hospital. You know, it can be out where they can feel a little bit more, um, you know, like it's, about them. It's not about the hospital and being in the hospital and being sick. You want the person to get well, you take them to where wellness is. Mm, Wellness is outside of the VA, you know, so they're finally learning that. They're talking to a lot of more uh, veteran organizations. They're coming to our organization because, as you know, we are one of the uh, most active uh, and larger, I would say, women veterans organizations. Our advocacy is known, is genuine. We do a lot for veterans and the community. And, you know, they're learning more about the needs this way because we see it all the time. They just don't get it sometime in places. And they don't want to get it sometimes because if they know about it, that means they have to do something about it. Right. I think a lot of times, particularly (laughs) the civilian community, don't really understand the plight of the female service member and the female veteran. And all, yes. A lot of the issues and stresses and traumas that people deal with is being a female in the military in a system that's mostly that's still male-dominated. And mm-hmm. I don't mean just by numbers, but male-dominated as a culture. Yeah, absolutely. And we can never catch that up. We will never be able to catch it up. I, don't, I think, I think one day, I think we can. I think we, we've beaten a lot of things in the military culture. Military culture, you could argue, mm-hmm. was once upon a time a, a white man's culture, and that's changed yeah. a lot. It's gotten more diverse yes. in, that, in that regard. We've seen a lot, even information about LGBTQ mm-hmm. um, in, in the military and, and accommodations and understanding about how they can serve mm-hmm. and serve the country. Mm-hmm. You know? So I'm, I'm, now, I'm hopeful for let it. Me just, yeah, I am too, but let me just say this. <laughs> Even though we've gotten in there, we still don't have a seat at the table. That's true. Let's go there. So, you know, you can be a part of something, 
But if you still don't have a voice and you have no power, then what's, what have you accomplished pretty much? Mm-hmm. It's like a big tiger with no teeth. You know, we have to be able to have a leverage where you can hear me tell you my story because I don't need the the DAV and the VFW to tell my story because you are a congressional chartered organization. So and you're only talking to those who are in the congressional chartered organization. So you're not listening to me and I'm trying to talk to you, but you want to go and talk to somebody in the American Legion about the issue that I just got through telling you about that didn't have anything to do with those men over there. It has everything to do with me, the female veteran, who has also spoken with other women veterans who have gone through the same thing or going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we have to be cognizant of, you know, those things that they push off and don't want to deal with because, again, once they know about it, they have to do something about it. And I think it's and interesting so can, that that, uh, that the military is starting to get a handle on a lot of the things that have happened, particularly with this information regarding how blacks were mistreated as far as benefits throughout the years. Yes. That's come out through the Black Veterans Project and things like that. That information has gone through wildfire, and there's actually a committee even or, or a board, and an equity committee, or I forget the name of the actual committee, but there's a committee developed for mm-hmm. to help try to investigate and see what's going on, but... And my, my, also my concern is, is with, and particularly not just in Chicago, but around the country, is the aging mm-hmm. veteran population. Because veterans, Absolutely. the veteran community is getting becoming older. And I run into a lot of veterans who, A, have not used a VA system throughout their lives, or they're not in the system per se, or, they're, mm-hmm. or, they, or they have very limited records in the system because maybe they brushed against it once or twice in their, and early in their lives. But they need health care. They need dental care. They need um, uh, caregivers to help them out in their house a lot yes. of them are, are by themselves or alone. We know, you and I both know a lot of veterans that are by, living mm-hmm. by themselves and they're, and they're mm-hmm. elderly and they need help. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, it's, and, and, it's a, and, you, so... can, and you can trace it. But one more thing, you can trace and a lot. If you look at their life, you can trace a lot of their, their solitude being tied to their military service because a lot of people dedicated their lives to the military then they didn't necessarily mm-hmm. raise a family or their family situation got fractured because they had issues when they came out of, out of service. Absolutely. And now they're by Absolutely. themselves and they're, el- and they're elderly. But then also look at the World War II and the Korean War veterans. Well, let's just go with the Korean War veterans because basically what happened is they're doing that era too where they didn't make a lot of money mm-hmm. working. You know, they had different positions where... They could only work certain places, you know, the same thing with World War II. So when it came time for the retirement, they're stuck in a, in a zone where they're on poverty level mm-hmm. because they never had good jobs. And so a lot of them wind up on subsidy and things like that. And ironically, if you're on subsidy, that means that no other organization pretty much, because they've put their standards to that too, that you cannot help anyone who is already receiving subsidy for housing. Now, what kind of nonsense is that when the person is receiving the subsidy because they can't manage it because they don't have the funds? Mm. And then you block them from all other parts of assistance and then say that, oh, because they're getting subsidy. Well, that's the main reason why they need somebody else to help. That's wild. You know, it's like common sense. It never gets to the right place. Mm. So are you hopeful that things are going to change? I am always hopeful, you know, because I'm a spiritual person, too. But I can only say that we have to do our part as that group, as the community outreach metropolitan. You know, our our voice has got to be heard. This whole group that we're forming, we're going to have to do our part. We're going to have to talk and then we're going to have to talk louder and then we have to talk louder until they hear us and we can't let up on them a lot of times we give up on a lot of things and we've done that in the past you know like i said a long time ago we were really really strong you know during that time i mean we were really strong but now you know everyone's kind of gotten much older and i was like right in the middle of that you know because i'm not a spring chicken either but i still got a whole lot of gas ready to go (laughs) you know (laughs) <laughs> Rochelle Crump, you're a U.S. Army veteran, founder and president of the National Women's Veterans United. Rochelle Crump, not to be confused with Rochelle Trump. <laughs> she is going to tell you about what's happening in the city of Chicago, that's for sure, and also around the world. 
So thanks for your time. And also thanks for bringing up this issue. We talked about a lot of different things and also things that are important to try to get people more involved with the, with the, the issues that this city faces and also at veterans across the country face. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate it. You and Glenda and Cliff. Oh, my goodness. You know, you're lifesavers to the city because you're able to get this information out, which is so important. You know, some people don't want to. That's America's Heroes Group. We'll be right back.